So we're back on the phone, overheated again, just like it did when we were in Las Vegas. So we are gonna continue this part two of where we left off. We were on a roll, but we're gonna continue right here. Give it a second to let it kick in, let you get back on there, and let you leave, figure out, just go where, right where we left off. We left off with the one thing, I gave you a list of all the different scenarios of how I get anxiety throughout the day. Anxiety was the secret word, secret word of what my biggest struggle is. Now you need to come up with it. I gave you all those different examples, all those different scenarios, if you were watching, about how I get different anxiety throughout the day. Then I told you there's one single word which I use to overcome that anxiety every single day. So who can tell me what that one single word is? I'll give you a second to, to try and figure it out. A couple people tried to, they said, I think Steve Owen said, visualization, meditation, that was not it. I need mean, one single word, what I use to overcome that anxiety. The, you know, there's a solution to every single one of those problems, every single one of those scenarios, again, in one word. This is what I do to overcome them every single fucking day with every single one of these problems or whatever. Who can try and tell, who can try and figure out what that is? Adapt, no. I'll, re I'll give you a second since we got cut off. I'll go through all those different ways of getting anxiety again. You know, how I live with it every day in different scenarios. So I, like, I'll repeat them all while you have a chance to try and figure out what the one word is I use to overcome them. I wake up in the morning. I, I said I wake up in the morning with anxiety if I even get, did I get up early enough. Then I have anxiety that I won't fit in anywhere I go and I've had that my entire life. Then I have anxiety when I'm training you guys in the gym if the session will live up to your expectations. Then I have anxiety when you freaks are training in the gym and I'm not training you, is have I properly put the pieces into place to service you and get you, you know, a step closer to your results. Caesar Immunos, fuck it. That's two words, genius. I said one word. Fuck would be a good one, but you said fuck it. That's two words. We need a better, we need another word. How do I overcome these? Then I have anxiety before every one of these fucking Facebook Live broadcasts. Will I have value enough information and tools to lead my people or why would somebody up there babbling Saying fuck nonstop, which I do do, but hopefully you get something out of these each week. Then I have anxiety in every meeting, every conversation, every person, every phone call, all day, anytime. You know, will I know what the hell I'm talking about, or just will I? Will, will how will it go? Will it, be, will it be smooth or whatever? Then I have anxiety when I'm hanging out with my free kids, wondering, you know, hoping that I'm doing enough with them and for them and spending enough time with them and all that stuff. Then I have anxiety when I speak in front of large groups of people. Then I even said I have anxiety when I go get the fucking mail. That's where we left off. I said, what's the one word that I use to overcome all this anxiety? Free camouflage t-shirt. Anyone that can tell me what that one word is. I'm going to give you like three seconds. We got to move on because we're already cutting. We're already going pretty long here. One word. Five seconds. Five seconds. While I take a, another sip of my herbal life. Where did my herbal life go? I don't even know where it went. I guess I left it outside. We overheated outside. That's why we got cut off and we're on part two. Breathe. No. No, no, no. One more chance. One more person. Give me one more chance to say something before we move on. Anyone, anyone, anyone. Focus. No. All right. The one word is fucking action. Action. To take action. And not just take action. Take massive motherfucking action. There is no time for stress and fear and fucking anxiety when you are in all out attack mode. I fucking attack with non-stop, unmatchable action until my fucking enemy or my fucking anxiety is laying in front of me, defeated in a fucking pool of blood, and I'm standing victorious over it. You know, I take that uncontrollable anxiety and I use it against its fucking self, and I use it as my secret superpower like a fucking superhero. It's taking your weakness and using it as a strength. It's taking, you know, a massive fucking heart attack problem and creating equal and opposite opportunity. So let's look at all the examples that I mentioned two seconds ago, and I'll explain how action conquers the fear and anxiety of all those situations and scenarios. Yeah, nice try, Cesar Munoz. Action, after I said it, you fucking genius. First you said two words, then you give me the answer after I said it. What the fuck, nice try. Whatever, you can get a t-shirt anyway, just for trying to be freaking slick. Anyway, all right, I said I wake up in the morning wondering if I've even slept enough and I, and I have anxiety, did, did I get up early enough? So what action do I take? I start working like a motherfucker and I get done more in two hours than most people get done all day and, and more than some people get done all, all fucking week. 
This action ensures that I make the most of my time and I get a head start on my day and I get done what I need to get done in just those two hours. I have nothing to worry about the rest of my fucking day. You know, I have a, I, the next one was I said I have anxiety that I won't fit in. Anywhere I go, I've had that in my entire life. What action do I take to overcome this? I put two different sneakers on, two different sneakers on every day when I first wake up in the morning. I'm basically telling myself, you are going to live your own life. You're going to live your own way. I set my own freaking standards. I embrace my weirdness, my craziness, and then I over fucking do it. If I'm already out there and whacked out of my freaking mind, I don't have to worry about being out there. Motherfucker, you need to show me that you're a good fit to be in my life. You know what I mean? You, you, will not, you will not see me blink an eye at anything. Nothing can phase my confidence when I'm walking around. I'm wearing two different sneakers. What else can I give a fuck about? So, you know, next I said I have anxiety when I'm training you peak freaks. With, you know, will the session live up to your expectations? What action do I take to overcome that? I overpromise and I overdeliver. I perform with nonstop passion, nonstop movement, nonstop fucking words, nonstop help, nonstop correction, and usually nonstop fucking shit talking. You know, I might crack some jokes, I might talk some shit to take off the edge. It's, it's not that fucking serious. It's a workout. Lighten the fuck up. But still in all out attack mode. You know, I have, next I have anxiety when you freaks are training in other sessions. And, I, and I'm hoping that I've properly put all the correct pieces into place to service you and to move one step or to your goals and results. What action do I do to overcome that? To be available to my people for anything they need. All of you, all of our staff, all of our trainers. But more importantly, to lead by example. To show what needs to be done to accomplish the mission. To be the fucking tip of the spear right through the fucking heart of the enemy. To lead the troops and run straight at the devil and slap that bitch around. You know, next I have anxiety that about every one of these Facebook live broadcasts. Will I have valuable enough information? Will I just sit in there babbling and this and that? What do we got here? What do we got here? Louder, I can't hear you. I can't control myself. Sorry. There's no such thing as getting too fired up. I don't know what happened to my drink. I fucking left it outside in the heat and now I'm pissed off. That's just going to be like boiling water when I get out there. Next, I said I have anxiety uh, when I do these Facebook lives. Like right now. Before I go out with you guys, you, you, I'm late. I'm, it's late. It starts late because you know why? I'm usually thinking I'm not even going to fucking do this. I don't want to do this. I don't want to go in front of there. I hate people. I hate cameras. I hate Facebook. I fucking hate the world. And I have anxiety about all of it. But what do I do to overcome that action? I just attack this fucking camera with being the raw, real, transparent version of myself. If someone doesn't like it, then go the fuck away. I'm here to serve people who want our help and our guidance, who need it, who deserve it. I give real advice for real people in the real motherfucking world that, that although some fuckers will hate what I say and what I do, most people can relate. So I'm talking to those people that can relate to what I'm saying and, and the way that I'm being myself and being real and just being normal. What's more, it's you know, more refreshing than some fake bullshit that you see out there. I will lead you to a life of better results, health, and a more positive mindset. I promise you, or I will fucking die trying to make that happen. Next, I said I have anxiety in every meeting, of, of every meeting, every conversation, every single phone call. Will I know what the hell I'm talking about or whatever? The action I do is I keep in mind a famous quote. I forget who said it. One of the uh, Marine Corps generals. It's slipped in my mind because I don't think straight on. I don't know what the hell's going on half the time. But a famous quote. He said, always be polite and professional, but have a plan to kill everyone you meet. So this action seems to get me through those necessary personal human interactions that I need to do throughout my day. It works for me, and so I just stick with it. Next, I said I have anxiety when I hang out with my freak kids. Am I doing enough with them? Am I teaching them right? Are, are they having enough fun with me? So what action do I take to overcome that anxiety? I go fucking overboard with them. We go crazy. We do all kinds of crazy, off-the-wall, crazy, fun, sometimes probably unsafe shit. But you know what? They're nuts. They fucking love it. And they appreciate it. And it, so if, if I'm going to go out there and overpromise and overdeliver with my members and clients, or if you're going to do that with your friends and you're going to always you know, be dedicated to going out and doing all this bullshit or partying or to, even to your business, you're overpromising and overdelivering to your clients and your business and your friends, and you're not doing it to your, your family and your, especially your kids, then you're just a fucking loser. That's, all, that's it on that. So then I said I have anxiety when I speak in front of large groups of people. What action do I take to overcome that anxiety? I take that anxiety. I fucking build it up inside of me. I build it up 10 times more than normal. I let it fucking boil. And just at the right time, I let a massive action, anxiety, motherfucking explosion take place in front of the group of people. So I might even partially black out and not remember many details, but it usually works out for the best somehow. 
Next, I said I have anxiety walking out to go get the fucking mail, which is crazy, but I have anxiety doing everything. It's just all day. That's just the way it is. What, you know, the, the invasion might happen when I'm walking out there. What, what action do I take to overcome that? Duh. I pack my fucking AR-15 and go on patrol when I go get my mail. If you're always ready, you never have to be ready, right? So that solves that. So maybe you are out there and you have anxiety about starting a new training program here at Peak Physique. Especially when you see some fucking nut job like me up here talking about all this shit. You might have a little anxiety coming in there. You might be a little, you know, you might be a little scared. You're thinking in your head. You're already giving yourself all these excuses, all reasons not to do it. Will it be too hard for me? Will I be able to keep up? Will I look like a fool? Will I get sore? Will I get injured? Will I puke all over the floor? Will I piss or shit myself? Or whatever the hell else bullshit is going through your head. What action can you take to overcome that anxiety? Just show up, just show the fuck up and we will take care of you. Just get started, get moving. You know, the action of starting, even if modifying, will overpower the anxiety of a lazy ass fucking person just sitting on the fucking couch, eating their cheese doodles, wondering what if this, what if that, and worrying if you can handle it and all this other bullshit that are just limiting the things in your mind. You're at war. You, you have anxiety that the, you know, you have anxiety that the enemy is surrounded and is moving in. You know what you do to overcome that anxiety? You're at war, you're surrounded, you're outnumbered. You know what you do? Attack that motherfucker and I guarantee you won't have that anxiety anymore. Your action will alleviate it or you'll just be fucking dead, but you won't have the anxiety. So take an action and, and you know, doing this episode today, I had anxiety about this episode, right? So what did I do for my anxiety to take action for that anxiety for this episode? I had an anxiety about doing the episode, I do the fucking episode. And I just try and bring it. I just try and bring it to you and bring you valuable information that could help you out somehow in between all the fucks that I say. You know, it has relieved my anxiety be about doing the episode of Steve Says by doing the episode. It's, it's fucking sick when you think about it when it comes down to it. It's, it goes back to my favorite saying, just stop being a little bitch. Usually the anxiety of doing something, the, the greatest way to overcome it is just to go do what you have the anxiety about. And then you'll, you'll sit in stress and you'll worry about what can happen, what might happen, what can go wrong, what will probably never fucking happen. Oh my God, the plane might crash, the invasion might come, my special pet goat might run away, we might lose gravity and my feet are stuck up my ass. So, but just stop worrying, stop, stop qualifying everything and stop overanalyzing everything and just get it fucking done. Afterwards, you'll most likely think, wow, that wasn't even that bad. It is never as bad as you perceive. And remember, perception in your head is reality. I am me. I am a fucking nervous wreck 24 hours a day filled with passion and dedication in everything I do, stirring up so much fucking anxiety that explodes into all my actions. I use this as a superpower. That's why I feel fucking unstoppable. I can't be defeated and I will not slow down. The anxiety keeps, keeps brewing, requiring vast amounts of explosive action. It's a nonstop fucking battle and I love it and I am the definition of a freaking peak freak. Kill anxiety with action. A lot of times, high intensity training session is exactly the remedy for your anxiety. Just go work it out. Go beat the shit out of the bag. That will work. I was, uh, I was seeing this stupid thing in the store. That stupid, what is it? That spinner thing. The thing these people are spinning in their hands, this little triangle thing or whatever the fuck it is. Like that is the stupidest thing I've ever seen. That, oh, if you have, if you have, I don't know, you have a hard time paying attention or you get nervous or bored or anxiety, spin this fucking thing in your hand or whatever. How about you take that shit, you throw in the fucking garbage, you shove it up whoever's ass invented it, and you go do, take some action to alleviate your anxiety. Go, those kids are using the, if, if I ever see a kid using that spinner, I might slap you in the back of the head. Go throw that shit out and go outside and climb a fucking tree or something. Those are the stupidest things I've ever seen. Action will alleviate anxiety. We need to change the subject because you get me too, too freaking worked up. Well, a freaking dehydrate or overheat or some shit. What are you saying? Widget spinner. Widget spinner. How is there a name for that? How did that ever get out there? It's in like every gas station. I was in Las Vegas. It was on all these different stores. Every store had these stupid fucking things. I don't get it. Climb a tree. Climb a tree. Action will conquer all that fear and anxiety. It will fucking destroy it. It'll kill it. It'll destroy the fucking enemy, which whatever that is. We need to move on. I just get late, and it was a class going to start at 3.15. That's why we move this back. We're going to be moving these back every Tuesday to 2.15 so we don't overlap with the training session that we have at 3.15. This week's case study is Louise Morezzo. We're going to move on. We're going to get past this anxiety. So you're giving me anxiety talking about the back of fucking anxiety. Case study, Louise Morezzo. This is what she said. She joined the Game Changer program that we have. It's an advanced nutrition and accountability and mindset program. She said, I joined the Game Changer program to step things up in my weight loss. I never imagined that the things I gained would be far more valuable than the pounds I lost. I thought at the onset I would lose 
more weight than I have. Remember that statement right there. She thought in this game changer program, she was going to lose more weight than she has. We're going to go back to that in a second. Because you would think if someone said, oh my God, I thought on this program I was going to lose more weight than I did, that I would cut that part out and not mention it. But I'm going to, I'm going to speak her words, and we're going to, but we are going to revisit that in a second. She said, but honestly, the weight is now secondary in my mind. Prior to this program, I did not have the peace, which I now feel regarding my journey of the new person I'm becoming. I know that the rest of this weight will come off, if not by the end of this program, perhaps later, but it will happen. I have changed in how I look and my life, at my life and my weight. I am calmer and more focused than I've ever been. See, I made her calm. Can you believe it? This fucking psychotic motherfucker made someone calm. I don't know how that happened, but shit works. She said, changes do start from the inside out, and I want to sincerely thank Steve and Eva for helping me find the tools and techniques that will carry with me long after this program ends. I truly do believe that I have just begun to discover this new me, and I'm liking it. So she started in January, Jan the, the weight loss challenge, I think, in January. So January 19th, she started. She lost 32 pounds up until the start of the, weight, the, the Game Changer program. She was already lost 32 pounds by then. This Game Changer program started six weeks ago. She lost another 12 pounds in the last six weeks. So that's two pounds a week for six weeks after she lost the initial 32. So she's down 44 pounds total. And so she lost 12 pounds in this six weeks of the Game Changer program, and she said she didn't lose as much as she expected, even though she already lost 32 pounds before that. 44 pounds total. That just shows you the, the, what the, the expectations are when they're coming to Peak Physique. They know that we are the, the top, the leaders in the industry in this area, especially when it comes to weight loss and results, that she's lost... 44 pounds in six months when she was able, unable to lose anything her entire life before that, for like 20 years before that, she's in better shape and more importantly, a better mindset than she's had in her entire life or in years. So that is our case study. The last thing we're going to finish with is congratulations to Steve Owen, who just last week was named Client of the Month and just yesterday hit his 50 pounds, weight loss, gone, fucking killed that fat and dead forever. 50 pounds down, and I think he did it in maybe five months or something like that. I think our record for 100 pounds is like nine months, Maureen did. I know Steve wants to lose 100 pounds, so he's got to get his shit together. He wants to catch up to Maureen's record. They were both the two clients a month last month. Are there any questions in here? Some stone skater kid came up with that. A fucking widget spinner. Glass that you can see yourself in? The hell does that mean? What in the hell does that mean? I don't even know. Anyway, that's it for now. We're going to get rolling because the, the next training session, 315, is about to start in four minutes. If you have any questions, comments, you can put them down in there. Steve Owen said he's coming for you, Maureen. He's going to, hunt, he's going to track you down and he's going to break your freaking record. So we finished this off two parts. If you missed the first part, you can go back and watch it. We're outside. Phone overheated. Second part, we finished off in here. That's it for now. We'll talk to you later. If you have any questions, put them in there. See you soon.